What's up, cellar dwellers? This is Overlord Dan, bringing you another night in the month of horrors. Tonight, uh, watch the second Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Revenge. And uh, this story was was pretty cool. Um, where the first movie, Freddy could only get you in your dreams. In this movie, Freddy possessed a dude named Jesse. And uh, he was able to use Jesse to bring his dream horrors into the real world. And um, some mayhem ensued. And overall, it was pretty fun. It was a bigger movie than the first one. You know, a lot of, they went a lot of places. You know, there's a pool scene. They actually went to the electric company, I guess, where the boiler room um, was from. So, you know, they went to the real boiler room. And there was like a whole big scene there. And they go to the school and like just, I don't know, the first movie felt like kind of a small environment. And this one, they kind of expanded it. Uh, so without further ado, I'll get to the categories in the ranking by category. Um, in each category, I'll do either thumbs up or thumbs down or mediocre, you know, down the middle. So starting with creativity, give it a mediocre. Um, obviously not as new of an idea as the first time around. It's a sequel. But they did add a different layer with the whole like possession aspect of it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Not enough to you know say this was really something new. But something different from the first try, sure. The gore gonna give it a mediocre on gore again because just like in the first one the they had some cool scenes some blood you know some slashing stuff like that but ultimately there wasn't a lot there's one scene where kind of his face gets melted there's another scene where he like bursts out of the dude's chest so maybe a little more than the first one but Still, like, you know, we're not seeing guts spilling out through the whole movie. Not seeing a whole lot of things that make you too queasy. Um, music, I'm going to go probably thumbs down on this one. The music was a non-factor. Where I thought they nailed it in the first movie. It was one of the highlights of the film. In this one, not much to it. The ambiance... The ambiance was interesting because most of the scenes happen in the real world and not in the dream world. So probably mediocre on that too, just because you lost some of the coolness of, of the first one. They were like, you know, when things got really hairy, like when Freddy was really taken over, things would start to get really kind of messed up. But for the most part, it's just like normal everyday life. So mediocre for that. Jump scares, probably mediocre on that one too. There's a few good ones where, where you know, they kind of get you. Um, great one at the end of the film where you're not expecting it. Um, but still, mostly, you're kind of prepared for them. They happen when Freddy's kind of starting to take over. Uh, the Lasting Impact, I give this one a thumbs up on Lasting Impact because... Um, where the first one was really, really goofy. This one kind of honed back on the goofy factor, made Freddy scarier, gave him a little more depth to his personality, and brought him into the real world, which, you know, makes him... The whole idea of you can't... He can't hurt you if you're not afraid of him, that kind of goes right out the window. So with the fact that it got a little more serious and the fact that they brought it into the real world, that gives it more of a lasting impact. Overall, probably give this one a mediocre. Um, it was a fun watch, but it felt like a sequel. It felt like the things that they did, they were trying to make it new, trying to make it interesting, but ultimately it just felt like a sequel. So that's it for this installment. 
And we'll see you again tomorrow night for another night in the month of horrors.